Welcome to Extremely Good Parenting, episode number 18. Today is all about self-indulgence versus self-care as a parent and how exactly you spend your me time. So, it's been a little while since we've talked and it's been a little while since I've recorded, but I've really missed it and I really, really, really have wanted to get back to you. So first, you've probably already heard it in the background, but I'm actually recording this next to a street because I'm sneaking in some time to do this and I'm really hoping that I can get a little bit of quiet and that I can edit everything out. But also, more importantly, join our group on Facebook, the Extremely Good Parenting Hideout. Talk about your parenting struggles there. But I will mention it in the episode, but it should also be mentioned now that if you would like to get free e-courses, especially relating to family, I have them on the site at caracarrero.com or extremelygoodparenting.com. But specifically, you can also sign up for my parenting e-course to get printables and all kinds of other three free resources by texting parenting to 444-999. Hi, everybody. So... I am actually sitting in my van right now at a nearby park recording this because lately life has been pretty crazy. Um, lately I haven't even been recording for you. Um, but it's still such a passion of mine and I'm trying to get back into the swing of it despite this pregnancy. <laughs> um, but I'm trying to get back into the swing of it with the school year because I know that that's a really good time for us and that it's also usually a really good time for you. Um, so especially because we haven't talked in a while, There's just been so much going on, and I know that probably life has changed so much for you as well. So I'm like six months pregnant, and it feels like I'm wearing a lead suit, Um, but life is good. Just getting back into the swing of things. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you my extremely good of the week, because it might be something that you're also interested in, and it's been something that I've been working on. Um, my extremely good of the week is that I've put together several email series on my website. So if you go to caracarrero.com or extremelygoodparenting.com, both of them are going to take you to the same place. But in the menu bar, there's actually a subscribe button and you can see all of these free different courses. That was free and not three, just so you know, um, that I'm offering. So. One of the most popular ones already is making meaningful connections with your kids, but it's also about just connecting as a family. You'll get free downloads, including sibling challenges and um, helping calm your child or calming tips for your child. And then there are just different, different ways that I have included to help really connect your family and create a strong family core. So that's my extremely good of the week. I'm really thankful to have gotten it done, but it's also something that I think that you'll love. So go check it out and subscribe if you haven't, because it's completely free. It's just something that I really, really want to provide. So today's topic is about a misguided notion of me time and me time in the sense that we identify it as self-care when in reality, it's not self-care at all. It's more self-indulgence, so to speak. And, you know, I know that I have long days and I have lots of responsibilities on my plate and I have my children to deal with and I work from home and I have to try to get the house clean and it's just a lot. And there are days that it feels like I'm going to break. And we talked about that in episode two with Amanda, but whenever we go through and we evaluate our lives and we talk about, 
refilling our parenting cup. I mean, that's a huge underlying topic of every single episode because we talk to all of these different guests and every single one of them will tell you how they refill their parenting cup. But when we refill our parenting cup, are we being indulgent or are we actually providing self-care? Because there is a difference between comfort and care. So, I really encourage you to look at what you do and is it something that you're just trying to find a distraction? Are you actually coping with some of the things that are bothering you or frustrating you or are heavy on your heart? Because even though comfort and indulgence have a place in our life, it can add to our anxiety if we continue to turn towards indulgence and self-comfort. And I know that it's really easy for me to tell you, hey, don't necessarily self-comfort all the time, like really take care of yourself. But the reality is, is I'm not very good at it. And that's why I want to talk about it because, you know, I feel like in the last several months, it's been very hard for me to care for myself. And with children running around, you usually have to sneak in time for yourself. You have to sneak in that me time. And so are we capitalizing on it? Are we, are we setting an example for our children that we are rejuvenating ourselves, that we are giving ourselves rest, that we are making sure that we are healthy and just that Overall, we are creating this fruitful, long-term self-care plan. And so some things that I just thought that, I mean, I'm thinking about and that I thought that might be helpful to you are, are you encouraging and pushing yourself to start something good? And good can be anything, but like, if you are encouraging yourself to start even just a very mundane, mundane's not the word. I don't know why I chose that word. <laughs> um, even if you are encouraging yourself to start even just a very, very low key exercise routine, like I'm not talking going out and running marathons or, um, weightlifting or anything like that, but like stretching in your living room. It releases some of that pent up energy. It's healthy for you. And you can still go through some of those indulgences that you really like. So if you like listening to music, go ahead and listen to the music that you love that accompanies the exercising that you're doing or vice versa. You know, find an exercise that accompanies the music that you love if you really love music. But you're, you are setting an example for your children but you're caring for yourself and caring for ourselves is so important. And I feel like I've lost sight of that in the last year in a lot of ways, just because life gets hectic, especially with multiple kids in the house and the pregnancy. Uh, let's not get started on that. <laughs> And I just realized that I was kind of spiraling because I was taking my me time and spending it on, on things that comforted me, not things that really energized me or things that cared for my soul. Um, so another idea is really nurture your mind, read, listen to an audiobook. Um, if you have faith, I mean, or just meditating, but if you sit and pray or read your Bible or whatever it is that you do that really fuels your inner most being and calms yourself, because I know I have such a hard time turning my mind off. Like, I can get the whole house to myself with nothing to do per se. And yet I can't sit there and do nothing. It just is part of me. And so if you can find a way to try to turn your mind off, try to alleviate that anxiety, that's huge. And then really 
me time doesn't have to be me time. Why not involve your kids? Why not bring them along in your self care routine? So by instituting a family walk or、um, a mom daughter mom son day that you do something every week that either is. Just rejuvenating, or helps get you moving, because movement is so great for your mind as well. That's why they say that that kids, whenever they go to school, if they don't have adequate recess, they're bouncing off the walls. And so it's it's really not that much different for us as adults that we need to get out and move too. We need to use the bodies and the muscles and. Everything that we have,、um, and then just cultivate a new skill. That's another idea. That instead of necessarily like indulging and consuming, my husband and I have talked a lot about like we live in such a consumer society, and so many times that consumer society, we talk about it like we're buying everything, but in reality, how many of us have sat down and binge watched a show? How many of us have sat down and binge read something? And it's not to say that's that's necessarily bad, but whenever we create, there's something powerful in that need to create, no matter what it is, whether it is writing or speaking or sewing or, I mean, any number of things, woodworking for. You know, I mean, there's just so many things that whenever we cultivate new skills and whenever we create, we find so much purpose, and I think that rejuvenates us, that fuels our soul, and it is a form of self care. So, again, I am absolutely. Not perfect at this, far, far from it. But this has just been on my heart. Uh, which is why, like you may have heard, traffic in the background of this podcast episode. But I realized I needed to overcome my perfectionism、um, to just be able to share with you something that's on my heart, because I think that a lot of us are living in this space of self comforting rather than self caring and self indulging. Rather than looking at the long term of our physical and our mental health, so let me know what you do for a self care routine because I would love to hear your ideas. Well, that's the show, everybody. I hope you gleaned some good information from it, but I also hope that you'll join me for this season per se, because I have so many great guests and great topics about parenting. Don't forget to stay up with the latest news and to get freebies by texting "parenting" to four 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 nine nine nine, and you will get it all. So I hope to see you next time. Until then, see you later.